Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to cover up the command structure and we will discuss that with the use of ls command. Now let us talk about the command structure first. Every command can be broken into three parts. First is the command name, the command that we want to run. Then comes the options. Options is how we can change the behavior of the output of the command. The output will still remain the same, but it will be displayed in some other manner, but it contains some extra information. The third part is the arguments. Most of the times the arguments will be nothing but either the file name or the directory name. So you can think of the arguments as the data. So the command overall consists of three things, the command itself, the options and the arguments. We need to separate all of these with space. This means that if you want to use the command and then it will be followed by the option, there will be a space. If there are options and there are arguments also, then the options and the arguments will be separated with space. If there are multiple arguments, the arguments themselves will be separated with space. It's not compulsory that you use options and arguments all the time with the command. The command obviously is the compulsory thing, but the options as well as the arguments are optional. You may use an option without using an argument. You may use arguments without using the options. You may not use the options and the arguments or you may use both the options as well as the arguments. We will discuss all these combinations with the help of the ls command. The ls command is used to list the directory contents. Now let us go to the practical part and we will see how we can use the options, the arguments in combination with the ls command. Now let us understand the command structure with the help of the ls command. The ls command is used to list the directory contents. Now the contents of the directory are files and the subdirectories okay a directory will contain files and subdirectories so if i use the ls command i can see a list of files and subdirectories now i have used only the command if i want to use the options and arguments then what we can do is if i open up the manual page for ls so it gives me a lot of options. Okay, you can go through all these options by scrolling down. Press Q to come out of the manual page. Clear the screen. Right, so I'll use one of the options here, minus L, which is to long list the directory contents. Long list means it is going to give me certain extra information. Now what this extra information is, in the very first column, it gives me the permissions on the files or subdirectories, then the number of links, then the user owner, group owner, size of the file, date and time, and the name. I'll discuss this separately also. But as of now, let me focus on the use of the command structure, the command, the options and the parameters. So with one of the options, we can see that the behavior or the way the output is being displayed is changed. Similarly, I can use another option minus A, which gives me hidden files also. So A means all, including the hidden files. So anything that you can see which starts with a dot is a hidden file. So in Linux, the hidden files, they start with dot. If you want to create a hidden file, you need to give the name starting with dot. Then if I use another option minus R, it will list them in reverse order. So you can see the entries are now listed in reverse order. So this is how I can use options with the command. Now let us combine an option with an argument. Argument in this case can be a file name or a directory name. So if I give here a name, let's suppose sample.c. So in this case, I am getting the long list for only the file sample.c. 
This might be the case because if you remember when I use ls minus l, the output was so large that I were not able to see all the entries. So I might want to focus on a few of them. Sample dot c, and then I might want practice or Linux. So three entries, right? Long list for only three of them. So arguments can be many. Similarly, options can also be many. So let's suppose I combine minus L and I want to combine an option D. D allows you to focus on the directory itself. I'll show the difference. If I write here ls minus L and I write the directory name, let us suppose D2, what it does is, it lists the content, long list the contents of D2 directory. But what if I want to see this detail about the D2 directory? Not the contents of D2, but about the directory D2 itself. Then I can club L and D. Need not to write minus L minus D. Need not to write like this. The hyphen in the very beginning means that all the options will follow. So L, D means there are two options, L and D. Then I want D2 directory. So now you can see I'm getting the details about the directory D2 only. Similarly, I might skip using the options and might only use the arguments. So let's suppose I write Linux sample dot C. So it, if I get this output, this means that these two entries are there in the system. But let us suppose I write something like this, QRT. So it says that QRT no such file or directory. This means that this entry does not exist and Linux is there. Or I can write here a directory name. In that case, it is going to long list or sorry, it is going to list the contents of the directory D2. Right. So in this way, we can mix up the options and the arguments depending upon our need. So I hope that the overall command structure is clear and the use of ls command is clear to you. This is a very basic command and very useful. In the next video, we are going to cover up four other commands starting from head, tail, passwd and the man command.